On this episode of Pedal Box, we're going to fit our fuel pump brackets and our hard lines, as well as make up some soft lines so that we can join everything together. So as you all know, we've got our nice aluminium fuel tank here and it has these ridiculous Dash 10 AN fittings on, way bigger than we need. So we've got these little step-down adapters that take our Dash 10 and turn it into a Dash 6. So we can have one of those on the bottom here that's our outlet from the tank and we're going to have one of them on the top for the return line. Now the fuel pump we're mounting quite close to the tank. That's going to go about here and it's going to be fed via this little inline filter. So we're going to have this little elbow fits onto our Dash 6. It's got an inline filter there, nice and low restriction, which is important because we're still on the non-pressurized intake side of the pump here. And this all just screws together like so. I'm not gonna run that in fully. So that fits onto the front of the tank. And then coming out of the pump, we're gonna go to a little piece of flexi just so that we've got some room to sort of decouple everything and take it apart if we need to. And that's another Dash 6 onto the outlet of the pump. Now, once this is all mounted up, we're gonna have the bracket of the pump sitting on the floor of the car or in a bracket on the floor of the car. As you can see, we've stripped most of the front of the car down so we can get much better access in to fit our fuel system. Now, obviously our tank sits in here and the pump's gonna go in this gap between where the tank lives and our master cylinders for the brake and the clutch. And we're gonna have to build a little platform out off this support that goes across the center of the car so that we can mount the bracket that holds the fuel pump onto it. Before that, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to it and check out our shop for some cool merch, none of which I'm currently wearing. So the tank's back in the car and this is our fuel pump assembly and we've made this little platform out of some one mil plate and just bent the edges over for a little bit more stiffness. Now this just sits underneath the support here and we can attach the pump on with its hard line like this. So we'll get this welded on and then we can move on to the hard line and put the other end of the flexi which is going to go in from this fitting down to around about here on the back of this suspension mount. The platform's all welded in and we've attached the pump back onto it so we can fit our AN to flexi fitting onto the outlet from the pump side. Now we can start looking at the flexi we need to go onto our hard line and that's going to start with fitting the hard line. So we've put the two attachments together to go from this end of the flexi onto the hard line and fit it onto the Cooper Nickel pipe. Now we've also put in a rivet nut on the back of this suspension mount and fit that in so that we can mount this onto a P-clip like this. So this means we can see exactly how long our hose is going to be and we're not going to have any really heavy duty kinks in it. So we can start fitting up the hard line and we're going to come back to the hoses later because they're a bit of a pain and I'd rather do them all in one go than one at a time. Our first hard line is complete. The ends are all nicely crimped down, the olives seem to have gripped nicely and they are good and firm. We probably should get some aluminium wrenches so we're not scuffing these up anymore though, but that is not going to be a today solution. So the next thing we need to add in at this point is to get through what will be the panel in here to form the forward part of our bulkhead up to the edge of the car. Now obviously we don't have that right now, but we do have our bulkhead connectors. These go onto the end of these hardline fittings here and eventually they'll be mated to the car permanently. Now we're going to have to put this in and the one above it for the return line in exactly the same plane, which isn't actually too difficult to do because we don't have the material to weld this in right now. And when we come back we can disconnect the lines, slide them through and fit them all up nicely. So it's not going to be terribly bad but what we're going to do now is finish up at the front of the car and do the return line from the bulkhead position all the way across to the fuel tank and hopefully we'll get that done before it gets dark. So now we've put a couple of AN fittings together I feel confident enough to show you how they work without ruining them because we might have ruined one. Um, this is the rear of the ferrule this wants to go over the tube first. Now this should be a fairly snug fit but you just push it down as far as it will go. This is an olive. The olive also goes over the top of the tube and that's what clamps down when you screw the pieces together. 
Speaking of the piece you screw together, this is the end of your ferrule. This is the, the AN fitting on the end of the pipe. And this outside diameter of the pipe goes into the inside di diameter inside this male thread perfectly. So this squeezes on like that. And you'll feel it bottom out. And then you just take the screw end of your fitting and start putting it onto the end of your AN fitting. I mean, I guess they're both the AN fitting, really. And eventually, they will start to tighten up. And you'll have to get tools. Now, ideally, you want aluminium wrenches for this. And I'll give you one guess what we don't have any of right now. We got the fuel lines in and connected up to the engine, but we're going to come back to those when we put the flexies on the front and test the whole system. It got really cold and dark, but we ended up finishing it up and getting it all done, even if I crippled myself just a little bit. Now I'm next going to start on putting in the firewall to complete the front end of the car across out to this outside edge on both sides, but I'm starting on this side because it doesn't have pipes and is therefore a little bit easier to deal with. So this is the first piece I need to weld in, and this is going to be the support of our lower panel. Now, I've cut out some blanks here of the rough shape, but these won't quite fit in because there is a big old bend that needs to go in to bring this plane in line with this plane here. You can see how this one fits when it comes in, notches around these tubes, and fits up nicely there. Now there's a little bit more fit and finish to do to get this edge to fit up really nicely against the inside of this uh, roll cage hoop that holds the windscreen up. And that's going to have to be done once it's all welded in just to get it exactly right because trying to get it to match up I think is going to be far too difficult right now. So we'll deal with that afterwards but for now I'm going to get the bottom piece welded in, get this all tacked in and then start getting in the bottom panel which comes across the front of here that this flange that I bent in welds onto. Now we've got the other side of the car tacked in place, we're going to turn our attention to the driver's side panel and where we're going to make the holes to fit our fuel lines because we have these little bulkhead brackets to fit on. Now I made a small mistake when I was cutting these panels out and I haven't made them quite long enough to go all the way down to the very bottom of the car, which is why I've had to put those two pieces of inch box section in between the inside and outside edges of the car. Now that means that I can't run these pipes quite as low down as I originally wanted them to, so they're going to have to be brought a little bit back up just to make sure that they fit and work properly. So we'll get this tacked in and start marking out where we can put those holes. Once the hole's drilled and I've fitted the bulkhead adapters and attached the two lines from the rear all the way up to this side, and I've also gone around and welded all of the seam in around here. So the last one to do is to join it onto this plate, which is going to sit under this side. Now the reason this is going to be metal is it's probably going to get hit with a lot of stones, rocks and all sorts of stuff as we're driving around, and I don't want it to, to break as easily, so it's going to be backed with some steel. Uh, it's also going to have lining around the inside of here as well, so it's not going to be too bad but I do want this not to get punctured so there's one of these going on each side. I'm going to weld this in, weld the other side up completely and then hopefully show you a few pictures of it all done in a minute. Well that's the fuel lines in and we managed to get the firewall almost completely welded in which is really good news so hopefully when we get the welder back we can finish those little bits off and we're going to add a few more odds and ends onto the chassis that we've been really meaning to pick up and finish for about three or four months now. We didn't get a chance to test the fuel line properly. Unfortunately, I've ruined one of the olives, so it would have just leaked everywhere, and there's no real point testing that much. So I might as well just buy some spares, and we'll fix the rest of it later and test it properly in a couple episodes' time once all those parts arrive. 
If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Do have a look at our previous videos and what we've been doing. Let us know what you think in the comments and like the videos. If you want to head over to shop.pedalbox.show, you can check out our merchandise, beanies, t-shirts, stickers, hoodies, and more. And if you'd like to support us more directly, you can go to patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can support us from as little as a dollar a month. And we really do appreciate everything that our patrons have given us up to this point. And we will continue to do so and actually bring you an update on what we've spent the money on soon. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.